let's dive into this special paper project. This is my project trailer. This video consists out of seven major parts. First we will look at the basics of paper making and create our own pulp. Second we will spread the pulp on frame to create a sheet of paper. Third we will pressure dry the paper. Fourth I will show you some examples of how I use the paper. Fifth we will test our approach by trying to apply the same process on pure oak sawdust. Sixth we will check the quality of the paper under a microscope. Seventh I will give you a bill of material for an easy duplication of this DIY project. We will also manufacture the mushroom paper with a 3D printed DIY paper making frame. That way you can create your paper in any format you like. My preferred way of working with the paper is to use it in combination with a laser engraver. Laser engraving creates a permanent and durable mark on that will not smudge or wear off over time. This video is the basis for my mushroom art chapter that I will develop in the foreseeable future. To enable you to make your own mushroom paper, I have created an extra chapter that covers all the tech that you need to create a mushroom friendly environment for the mushroom to prosper. I also created a chapter to teach you how to master the biology aspects of growing mushrooms. Of course, if interested I will also tell you something about myself, and why I started this project. I hope you noticed, that my tutorials are structured like a book. I produced this and all my other videos in a way that they can also be used as a printout. All the design that are shown in my videos can be downloaded. Hey! My name is Daniel, I am from Germany, and I will be your host. Maybe you want to consider to buy me a coffee? I did put a lot of work into this lecture series. I hope you enjoy it. You could also support any other good project. Now we will jump directly into the process of making paper. There are many tutorial about paper making here on YouTube. But mostly all of them are about making paper out of paper. That is how it is also done in elementary schools in Germany. Great craft, but nothing special about it. But we have a different glitch. We want to create our own paper out of wood. That is a completely different idea. So how is paper made? The process can be broken down to eight basic steps. Logs are cut down and debarked to remove the outer layer of bark. The wood is then chipped into small pieces called chips. That is easy for us to perform, because we will just take oak sawdust pellets, et voila, steps will be done. Great. Next, the chips are then cooked in a chemical solution to break down the fibers and remove the lignin, a natural binding agent in wood that gives it strength and rigidity. This process is called pulping. After the pulp is then washed and screened to remove any remaining impurities. Finally the, the pulp is then mixed with water and other ingredients such as dyes or sizing to create the desired properties in the paper. It seems that chemicals are definitely needed to remove this lignin. The bleaching afterwards is a different topic and could be performed by sun bleaching. Lignin is a complex polymer that makes up about 25 to 30 percent of wood, it gives wood its strength and rigidity but it is hard to break down and remove, so it is a major challenge in paper making. The creator Ravenfly created a very nice and short video, 
where he performed these steps in a DIY fashion. He uses these basic cleaning products, because they contain the needed chemical components. This shows the how the lignin is removed by soaking and cooking the wood in sodium hydroxide solution. This has to be performed a couple of times. In the back you see the waste product. Black liquor. Black liquor is a byproduct of the pulping process in paper making. It is a dark colored, concentrated solution that contains lignin, hemicellulose, and other organic chemicals. The remaining liquid, which is dark in color, is known as black liquor. Traditionally it was considered a waste product that needed to be disposed of. To get the wood fibers from a dark color to a lighter one he uses bleach. He really did a great job in this video. This is his end product. These fibers could now be used in combination with traditional methods of spreading the pulp and drying it. Thus, during my research this became my core question. Can the appliance of chemicals be replaced by the usage of mushrooms? Reishi is not typically used to decompose lignin in wood. There have been some studies that have investigated the use of reishi extracts in breaking down lignin in wood, but it is not yet a widely used method. I found on a Japanese homepage hints to the strong power of reishi to decompose lignin. Shiitake and meitake would also be able to do the job. Since the Japanese are all in on mushrooms and have a very long tradition, I am trusting this account, and spoiler alert, of course, it did work. So, we can use our cherished reshi mushroom to remove the lignin from the wood. Nice. We can use mycology instead of chemistry for this project. And what about the bleaching? Sun bleaching can be used to naturally lighten or whiten clothing by exposing the fabric to direct sunlight for a period of time. The UV radiation from the sun causes the dye molecules in the fabric to break down and fade, resulting in a lighter color. The process can be repeated until the desired shade of white is achieved. Here we see how a museum uses this technique to bring back contrast to a faded out picture. All what is needed is sunshine and filtered water. This a technique that has been used since ages. It took our forebears month to get a snow white clothing. That is why the women work together, performing the pleaching process for many weeks. And since the clothing did go to yellow after time during aging, this process had to be repeated with every wash. So, thumbs up for or the work our female ancestors had to perform in order to create the culture that led us where we are now. We should not forget where we come from and tread the ladies, old or young, always in a good way. Since I designed my own paper making mesh screen, the sheets can be produced in the desired size. Drying and pressing can also be performed with ordinary household elements. So, we have covered all important parts of the wood to paper process. This is the specification that guided me during creating my paper. I will address the different important topics during the rest of the presentation. If one is further interested how paper is made in the industrial way, check out these videos from the company Hallman. Really great animations. Since paper making is like bleaching an old process, in this video the traditional way is shown in an authentic way. Everybody should know the word Dutchman next to the word pulp. If you like the paper topic, just take your time to enjoy it and explore it further. Let's check out the paper that I made. Here you see. Reishi mushroom sawdust paper. Pure pressed reishi and. Pure oak sawdust. There are three peculiarities. 1. Pure pressed reishi. 2. Reishi mushroom sawdust paper and. 3. Pure oak sawdust. To achieve the wanted properties of the paper a blend of reishi sawdust and pure reishi can be used. Making your own paper reduces the need for commercially produced paper, which can be resource intensive and harmful to the environment. The whole process of making your own paper allows for a high degree of creative control over the final product. Different fibers, colors, and textures can be combined to create unique and personalized papers. Making your own paper can be a fun and educational activity, teaching people of all ages about the paper making process and the importance of recycling and sustainability. Pure oak sawdust does not work. 
Reishi mushroom paper instead does work and looks great. It is not that dark and quite flexible. A close up from the lasered paper. Even with big pockets of black the paper did not change. This is not always the case when one lasers something into ordinary paper. The resolution is also great and fits good in combination with the texture in the background. Laser engraving does not require any inks or chemicals, making it a more eco-friendly option than traditional printing methods. My paper has a different texture on each side. Due to the filtering this side has a net-like texture. After drying and pressing the other side has a smooth and planned surface. I specially enjoy the small mushroom pieces. That is why I did not filter them out rigorously. This picture shows how I stored the sheets during the drying process before placing the sheets in a press. In this picture you see the main working setup one needs to produce paper. You have the pulp, or what I like to call the mother soup on the top, the watered down version on the right and the 3D printed paper making frame on the left. Now it is time to dive into the detail of the manufacturing process. We start with the making of the pulp. The pulp does originate out of mushrooms. Thus, we must look at their life cycle. Each phase of the life cycle must be met with its different challenges. That means, that the approach to generate mycelium has also to change with each stage. The four main stages you need to master are, First, the generation of agar plates. Second, the making of grain spawn runs. Third, the creating of nice big sawdust bags. These contain the needed food for the last stage. That is the fruiting stage, which directly leads to harvesting. This is fruiting reishi mushroom on an oak sawdust block. I let it grow over six month old for this video. I took it out of my Martha to cut it open. Please notice, that there is no excess water, some call that mushroom piss. The rubber band is incorporated into the sawdust structure. Bag looks old and shriveled, because they are dry. Beside excess water, mushroom piss can contain metabolic byproducts, and other substances. For me it is a good sign that the mushroom took control of its habitat. The black islands are the dried out pockets of excess water. There are two interesting things to point out. 1. If you do not take care of your bags, the mushroom will grow out of it. The antler will transform into a conch. The reason is, that the oxygen level is very high once it is not in the bag anymore. You should not wait so long. The mushroom will release spores into your living area. Once they reach the top of the bag, they should be placed in a chamber with under pressure. Two. You can see that the rubber band helps the mycelium to regulate the water level. Some growers do not like this mushroom piss. I do like it. It did not lead to contamination in any case. For me it is a sign of a healthy bag. When I have old bags, I want to fruit for a second time, I will give it some water. Remember, the fungi breathes, eats, and drinks like us humans. Treat it kind, and it will thrive. This fruiting body looks old and dry. The harvest was long overdue. Could have been harvested earlier, and with the addition of extra water, the sawdust mycelium could have had a second flush. The sawdust mycelium look healthy still. I wanted to keep it growing for a long time to be sure that as much lignin is decomposed as possible. Next, I harvested the fruiting body. I will make power and later tincture out of it. As it is hard like wood, you need wood tools. Let's cut open the bag. Remember, all we want for this project is the sawdust mycelium. I used an ordinary bread knife with scalloped edge. I also have this cutting device. It is not needed, but I like to use it and it does not matter how you chop of the block. I place the whole block in a plastic box. Use your hands to break the structure further down. Here you see the rough chunks I broke the block into. 
Next you should separate the skin from the sawdust. You could also start with this step. In the end it does not matter which step you perform first. You want to have the sawdust mycelium separated. These blenders are strong enough for the sawdust mycelium. If I have little to no fruiting body parts in my blend, then I use the right blender with 3D printed blades. Otherwise, I use metal blades. To break down the fruiting body, you need a good grinder. I will show you mine later. You need to add some water in order to fragmentate the chunks. Do not add too much, otherwise the fragmentation effect of the blades will be greatly reduced. Wood pellets are typically made from compressed sawdust or other wood waste products, such as shavings or fines, that are generated by sawmills and other wood processing operations. The raw materials are ground up, dried, and then compressed under high pressure to form pellets. Since the oak wood pellets consist out of sawdust one only breaks down the mushroom. Here you see what I call the mother soup. Pure oak sawdust does behave differently. I often use these plastic boxes. They also have a lid and can be used for many tasks. Now we gather all the pulp in one tub. Now the pulp is ready. The pure mushroom could be first dried and then processed to powder. After it could be also added to the mother soup. One can create a blend according the mechanical properties or aesthetic texture features one is looking for. This step is common and often performed by elementary school pupils I order to gain some craftsmanship. Since we are older than kids, we raise the challenge and print out our own frame for making paper. I created two versions, one for 0,4 mm nozzle and one for 0,6 mm nozzle. The size is 16 x 10 cm. Many pictures have the format 15 x 10 cm. Results in 1 cm fringe for cutting purposes. Here you see my Ender 5 Pro equipped with a 0,6 mm nozzle. I added direct extrusion, blow touch, and a glass bed. For printing ABS, I have placed the printer in a closed box. I printed the frame with common PLA. Printing took only two and a half hour. This is the top element. The height is needed to trap enough of the pulp inside. You can find all my designs on Thingiverse or printables. These are classic wooden frames. They can also be used. They can be bought in different sizes and also easily manufactured DIY style at home. I will give you some links at the end of this video. For mushroom paper I would buy ones with a metal grid for stability reasons. Since I wanted to have a special size, I just printed my own frames. Since the grid is too big for our sawdust and short mycelium fibers, we will add an extra filtering layer. I use this kitchen dish cloth. 37 times 51 centimeters. Cut it once. Open and cut it once again. The result is a perfect fit for my frame, and it consists out of two layer of dish cloth. Place the upper frame on top of it and you are good to go. The usage of this filter element helps to create a consistent thickness and is quite handy for moving the sheets during the next process steps. One can also see in the picture that the filtering net is also not too dense. Here you see the rich and dense thickness of the mother soup. I water it down to create the pulp I want to use. Later you replenish the pulp occasionally after taking out sheets of paper. This is craftsmanship. You will make your experiences and get better by making more. It is interesting to see how the soup is kind of breathing. Like a yeast cake. This is typical for the Reishi Mycelium sawdust pulp. If one takes only sawdust, there is not yeast-like effect to observe. Here you see how nicely the pulp is distributed. Pure oak sawdust it will look completely differently. You have in fact floating but living Reishi mycelium in water. Here you see the first half of the process. Place some kitchen cloth into the frame and close it. Stir the pulp until you have a good mixture. Go with the frame through the water. Give it time to lose to water afterwards. Refill with mother soup once a while.
when the excess water ran up place it on a sponge. Take of the top of the frame. Put the whole sheet on a sponge. Put the sponge for drying on a grid. Do not mind if it is not perfect flat, since you should only have soft mushroom tissues after mixing properly. Sheet will be flat after pressing it. The process time can be greatly reduced by using several paper casting frames. I ended up using two. This enabled a smooth paper making process for me. Next, we will check out the drying and pressing of the paper sheets. For drying I placed the paper on a kitchen sponge. One could also use paper. Optimal there should be an airflow from all sides. Since my second Martha is currently not filled with mushrooms, I used it to dry my paper. The airflow still goes out of the building, and it also shows the humidity degree inside. I ended up making 54 pieces of paper. Here you see on the top that it is starting to get dry on the edges. When it gets dry it shrinks and thus you see the uplifted corners. A close up picture of the uplifting corners. Now it is time to put the sheets under to dry under pressure to have them stay flat. I used two wooden bars in combination with my normal multipurpose press. The sheets are placed between dry paper. Whenever paper curls up, you place it in your press. Do not use too much force. Be gentle with your paper. Just give it time and hold it flat. At the beginning is used more force to ensure a proper thickness and later reduce the force just to maintain the flatness. Since my 54 sheets of paper were too much for my press, I had to take off the punch to free some room. You have no press? No problem there are several optional ways. One could just use a clamp on each side. Just use two clamps. One on each side, and you won't need a press. I guess one in the middle would also do the job. This is the way I would suggest you use. It is the easiest. Should be enough pressure for the purposes. So, what to do with the sheets? The picture shows on sheet. Scan from both sides. If you do not want the net texture, just peel of the kitchen dish cloth before placing the sheet in the press. A scan from a different paper. I like the texture sty and the chosen blend. They can be used in art projects since mushroom paper is kind of special and may serve a purpose of itself and thus deliver some extra content. I uploaded the textures into this folder. Please feel free to use them. You could also share what you used them for. That may inspire some of us. I already used the texture as a background for some cards I sent out. It looked really nice. Since I wanted to use the paper for creating art pictures, I will use my CO2 laser to do so. After I will also use paint and brush. That way I have a fusion of biology, tech stuff, and human generated parts all in one tableau. Laser engraving allows for very precise and detailed designs to be etched onto the card, resulting in a high-quality, professional-looking finished product. It creates a permanent and durable mark on the card that will not smudge or wear off over time. Laser engraving does not require any inks or chemicals, making it a more eco-friendly option than traditional printing methods. I am really happy with my results. I love the texture. The black has a really nice deep color. Since burned wood often does look much lighter, I am quite happy with my choices. Oak and Raishi are a very good fit in combination with a laser. 
This is a flower picture I assembled out of the plants that grew during the time of making in my small garden. This is the picture my wife created. I like her style of symmetric arrangement. The main benefit of pressed flower art is that it allows the preservation of the natural beauty and colors of the plants in a permanent form. Additionally, pressed flowers can be used to create unique and personalized art pieces, and can be used to decorate home, office, or as gifts. Pressed flower art also has therapeutic benefits, it can be used as a form of mindfulness and relaxation for people, as it requires patience and concentration on the process of pressing and arranging the flowers. It can also be used as a way to connect with nature and appreciate its beauty. Now we will challenge the whole process. This test will be fun. Now we will do exactly the same, but only with pure oak sawdust pellets. I did give the oak pellets a good amount of time to soak. Mix the pulp. Gave it time. Mix the pulp. And gave it time. At the end it looked like this. This is a completely different look to the mother soup that we created earlier. I took out some of the pulp and it is obvious that is a different kind of animal we know have in front of us. It should by now be clear, that this does not work, but I will create some sawdust paper anyway. It is a good way to show you the paper making process again. Always stir the pulp in the same way that you always have the same consistency. The second part of the process. Taking the sheet out of the frame and placing it on carrier sponge. The sheets are dried in the used way. Here you also see a major difference. The carrier sponge starts to get wavy, not the paper. Since there are no mycelium fibers in this paper and it only consists of very small wooden parts, it has no cohesion. It is just a pile of dust. To be consistent to my approach, I also pressed one paper and checked if that would make a difference and it does not. The mycelium makes all the difference. Without it, there is no paper out of sawdust wood without chemicals. Let's have a very close look of the product. Now we will check out what the paper looks like under magnification. We will start with old and thus completely dry mushroom paper. We place a sample on a microscope slide. And place the sample in the microscope. It does not look like dust. There are short fibers. They seem connected via smaller fibers. Could be very well be mycelium. 
that is why I give it a long time drying up without haste between the sheets in the press. Since the sawdust mycelium was alive it will continue do its thing, until it dries out. The longer the drying process the better the paper quality. But too long will lead to mold. Let's compare it to freshly formed paper. I just took a small piece from the corner. I still intend to use that sheet later for my art project. Here you see the corner and also lots of small fibers. The surface look nice and smooth. Everything is connected. Unfortunately, I do not have focus stacking for my microscope and just use my iPhone to take a picture through the eyepiece. After a certain magnification factor the picture becomes fuzzy without the said feature. Pure Rishi can be used in a blend like carbon fibers. Here we can observe how Rishi behaves. It does not become pulverized. Instead, it becomes mushy like a kind of short fibrous wool. The volume grows up significantly. If you put too much in, you will have hard pieces left in your reishi wool. Only shredder a little. Normally I use the fruiting body to create tincture. The mushroom is cooked. And pressed afterwards by hand and also with a tincture press. You want to get all the liquid out of it that you can. Here you see a sample from the pressed leftover. The texture comes from the bag that was used to filter the liquid out. That texture is no a hindrance for us. The higher the magnification, the more difficult it will become to get a clear focus. Again, we see strings of mycelium. Since the reishi was beaten into a kind of wool of fleece, it is much longer fibered than the sawdust mycelium. Again, focus stacking would be a nice feature but is only needed to take a picture. If you look directly with your eyes at it, your brain does all the stacking. Least checkup will be on the pure oak sawdust powder. I tried to cut off a piece without bringing in any disturbances. Wasn't that easy, since I spoiled the sheet a little bit before, but the chosen corner was fine. Here is a corner of the corner. All the wood seems loose and not connected. What we see are loose pieces of sawdust. There are not small strings of mycelium connecting the parts. Here are some wood elements. All separated and isolated. No fibers, no mycelium connection. Wow, we are already nearly at the end of this lecture. This is the basic setup for paper making. The small containers are 10 liters container with the size of 365 times 265 times 140 millimeters. Wooden pieces can be designed according to your own liking. The big container is an 18 liters container with the size of 400 times 335 times 170 millimeters. This is my designed frame for paper making. It consists out of two parts. You find the STL files at Thingiverse or Printables. This is a wooden frame I also used. I prefer the ones with a metal grid. Most of these frames have plastic nets. They come in different sizes and are not expensive. For this project I prefer metal nets. But you can also build your own frame. Check out Instructables. So, what is needed for drying? I used Martha grids for placing the parts for better drying upon. This is the kitchen dish cloth that I used. Just look at what you have available and use it. Same goes for the sponges. I used these because they were cheap and easy to get. Old paper for press drying the sheets is also recommended. A press is not really needed. A clamps in the middle will have the same result. I also like the water bottle solution. You could also use your autoclave. Should be heavy enough. Let's close the shop with some final points. Now that I have shown you, what I am planning to do with the paper and how I manufacture it, 
What are your plans? Is it a science project for you? Do you also want to use it for art? Please share your thoughts with us. Maybe you have an idea to improve upon the process. Feel free to share with us. I do not know when my Zen art will arrive, but it will. Maybe it will be of no interest to many, but I will do it anyway. Man, I did all this mushroom work just to have the paper that is a satisfying fit for my Zen art. The time I spend with the mushrooms is very little compared to the time I spend with Zen. Thank you, for spending your time with me. Auf Wiedersehen.